welcome welcome you all to the session session of, of this rift generation systems since all of you know that we are currently stuck in a pandemic situation caused by the covid-19 we have to we are compelled to uh, shift our basic and general chalk tester mode of study of teaching into digital digital mode so now today we will be discussing about the basics of refrigeration systems so the first lecture this is the first lecture we will be discussing about refrigeration systems and the basics of reverse canon engine now i am arindu mukherjee i am currently working as an assistant professor of automobile engineering department of dr sudeep chandra shud degree engineering college which is under the guidance of jas group okay let us move on to the next slide and now we will be discussing about the objectives of this lecture why do we want to teach and what is the mode what is the reason behind of teaching this refrigeration i hope uh, my basic intention is to teach about the basics of refrigeration process here we will be discussing about the physics on uh, the physics and the the thermo i'm sorry for my handwriting um this is um so we'll be dealing with the physics the physical part and the thermodynamics part so we'll be discussing the physical aspects and the thermodynamic aspects the property relations between the different pa parameters which we get across in thermodynamics during this refrigeration process now next we will be moving on to to discuss the concepts of cyclic refrigeration process and non cyclic non cyclic refrigeration process what are the differences between them where they are applied how they are applied and what are the limitations of cyclic or non cyclic refrigeration process we will be dealing with that and finally and we will be dealing with so from the cyclic point of point of view will be much more concentrated we will be dealing with the cyclic refrigeration process much more because it is applied widely because it is used widely and as you know sadi karnom the father of thermodynamics has conceptualized conceptualized the thermodynamic engine or what we call as heat engine so we will be dealing with the reverse carnot engine the opposite of a heat engine so which will lead us to the path of refrigeration so this is the first stepping stone of to under, under, understand to feel what is refrigeration how refrigeration is made so let us move on to the next slide there is the outcome of this lecture i hope that the students you on the other side of this lecture who are hearing hearing it at this present moment you will be able to understand the fundamentals of it like as i said earlier you will we will be dealing with the physical part and the thermodynamical part with the refrigeration process we will be discussing the physics and the thermodynamics of refrigeration process i think you will be able to classify the differences between cyclic and non cyclic refrigeration process you will be also able to understand the what what do we mean by reverse heat engine cycle what do we mean by reverse carnot cycle so this reverse heat engine cycle and reverse carnot cycle they are actually both same they have just two different names so um, i hope you will be able to understand the concepts the fundamental concepts and from that concept you will be able to solve the problems so this is the outcome of this lecture this is the planning now let us discuss what is refrigeration and how it is done so refrigeration is defined as the process of sorry uh, very sorry very sorry 
Okay, so refrigeration is defined as the process of cooling. So it is the process of cooling. Cooling below the surrounding temperature see so let us take the system a and the surroundings as b now they are interacting some they're transferring some amount of heat now if the system starts transferring a certain amount of heat q1 at uh, say t1 temperature then obviously after some time when the heat transfer takes place this this system will it is as it is rejecting some amount of heat the temperature of the system a will naturally drop now if if T1 let us see it goes on to T1 dash now if this T1 is less than that of, that of the um, surroundings temperature then we can say that a refrigerant process has been occurred now you have to understand that you have to understand that um, refrigeration and cooling are not the same things they are quite different okay so uh, so there is a difference of spontaneity so cooling is spontaneous process but refrigeration is not refrigeration has to be performed and can be achieved only when we are applying some amount of energy in the form of work so until and unless you doesn't apply some amount of work externally refrigeration effect there is no refrigeration effect so what what is the basic difference between cooling and refrigeration cooling is a spontaneous process the temperature drop occurred through cooling can be or cannot be less than the surroundings temperature it may be the temperature after cooling can be equal to surroundings can be greater than surroundings or can be less than surroundings now until and unless the temperature is not less than the surroundings we cannot say it is a refrigeration effect so we have to understand these two factors spontaneity and the temperature which we had earlier discussed so until and unless these two conditions are set satisfied, we cannot say that a refrigeration process has occurred here. Okay, so uh, you will see here, as you know, that we have already provided you the class notes. You will find the example of, of um, uh, keeping a hot glass of water. And cooling it if you find this the temperature after cooling is less than surroundings then actually if you keep it alone without applying some amount of external force it will be never less than that than that of the surroundings so it is nothing but a cooling process but if you drop some amount of ice into it you will see that there is a refrigeration effect these are the basic two differences which we have to understand now let us move on to the you will find the app, you know, different applications over here mm, we've been so it is mo mostly used in food processing and food process um, 
so we were discussing about the applications of refrigeration as we can see it is mostly used in food processing and preservation industries it is used in chemical industries to in the in most of the medical industries where you have to create some amount of chemicals you have to create some amount of medicines refrigeration is absolutely necessary you cannot prepare medicines without the help of refrigeration systems now refrigeration can be classified into two broader ways one is this natural and the other one is is artificial so ice is the most common medium by which natural refrigeration process can can be observed you can find out the natural refrigeration process only by using ice as all of you know that ice melts at 0 degree celsius so whenever ice melts some amount of heat comes to this ice from the surroundings at a certain temperature and when this ice is starting to melt that means it is receiving receiving some amount of heat and this heat has to be considered now the system or the surroundings has already rejected the amount of heat which is helping the ice to melt so this melting of ice has to be considered and as the system is rejecting some amount of heat we can say that the space from where the heat is coming on that is being refrigerated that the space is getting refrigerated because of the heat transfer from that system to the ice okay so this is a basic uh, fundamental of natural refrigeration process in earlier days we have to borrow some amount of ice from america or countries where you will find um, that the cold country, cold countries you have to we need to borrow ice but in nowadays we doesn't have to do so because we have the provision of using artificial refrigeration process now we'll be dealing mostly with this two process vapor compression and vapor absorption and gas cycle gas cycle refrigeration system also will be dealing with this mostly with this three now presently in modern days these two systems are being used but um, they are basically on the experimental level and they are mostly used used in industry okay so we will be mostly dealing with these two things now the most important part here now we will start to discuss about <coughs> the cyclic refrigeration process now what is the need of this cyclic refrigeration process now as we have uh, discussed that ice is a mode of natural refrigeration process but but the problem is that ice has a certain quantity say x kg you are using x kg of ice to obtain the refrigeration effect but after that ice has completely melted into water the refrigeration effect cannot be found so it indicates the end of refrigeration so this is the most important point but if you make a provision so that this ice can be supplied in cyclic manner the water which is being created is being formed into ice once again then you can say then you can obtain the refrigeration effect for a long time for a longer time so this is the effect so this is the reason why we are compelled to uh, shift from a non cyclic to cyclic so this is the basic reason so for the continuous refrigeration effect we are compelled to transfer ourselves from the non cyclic mode to the cyclic mode so this is the basic reason okay so let us move on to discuss um, what do we mean by um, the reverse carnot tension or the basic of cyclic refrigeration process so let us deal with with that
so you can see that mm, this is the source and this is the same so a engine or you can say refrigerator or a heat pump is working so this is the refrigerator and it is working between two thermal energy reservoirs okay t e r thermal energy reservoirs now source is the high temperature and sink is the low temperature so t1 is greater than t2 so we can say that the refrigerator is working between two thermal energy reservoirs the source has the higher temperature capacity or the higher heat capacity and the sink has the lower heat capacity so heat is being if there was an engine place between these two thermal reservoirs heat would have been transferred from this direction to this direction now as it is working reversely so you can see that heat is being transferred from the sink and there is some amount of external work being applied to this refrigerator so you are giving some amount of external work to this refrigerator so that it can operate in a cyclic manner and after receiving the desired effect this the heat is being rejected to the source this is the basic operation now so it is nothing but a heat engine operating in a reverse direction heat being taken from sink and being rejected to the source in general process you will see that when you are dealing with the heat engine when you are dealing with the heat engine heat is being taken from the high temperature source and it being rejected to high low temperature sink but in case of dealing with a reverse heat engine the heat will be transferred from the low temperature sink to the high temperature source and the most important part is that there is some amount of external work being provided to it so this is the concept of reverse engine so to understand the performance of this reversed heat engine or uh, we can say the reverse heat engine as a refrigerator we can term it as a heat pump it can operate in both ways actually so to understand the performance we have defined a new parameter which is called as which we call as cop now what do we mean cop cop is a desired heat effect by the work input so how much work you are giving into it this w is important here and what are the desired heat effect this Q2 is a low temperature heat which will be concerned in refrigerator and this is the high temperature heat which will be concerned for heat pumps okay so so COP for heat pump will be somewhat like this so as this is the high temperature heat Q1 is the high temperature heat so we have written Q1 over here and COP P of the refrigerator will be it will be something Q2 by W okay so this is the basic thing to understand the performance of this reverse heat engine which can work in both ways which can work as a heat pump or as a refrigerator we have to understand this COP and the COP of heat pump as it deals with the high temperature heat here it is given as Q1 so COP of a heat pump will be Q1 by W so this desired heat effect for a heat pump we are desiring high temperature heat to keep our houses warm and in case of refrigerator our desire is to keep our houses at a lower temperature comparatively that of the surroundings okay now see that uh, COP of a heat pump is Q1 by W now this q1 by w as already written over here q1 is the net heat rejected to the source 
Now what are the inputs here? This Q2, this Q2 is taken from the sink and the volt input here. So Q1 is the net heat output and it is the sum of from the conservation of energy principle this Q1 will be equal to Q2 plus W. So putting this value of Q1 over here we can see that 1 plus Q2 by W. Now we know that Q2 by W is nothing but the COP of a refrigerator. So we can deduce a relationship like this. COP of a heat pump is equal to COP of a refrigerator plus pump. Now we have uh, discussed much more about the COPs and all. Now we will be dealing about what is the fundamentals of a refrigeration process. Wh how refrigeration can be obtained from this reverse Arnold engine. So for that so for that we have to visualize this engine over here so first the fluid which is giving us which is providing us the refrigeration effect the refrigerator has to be compressed in this compressor now for to compress we have to provide some external amount of water that is WC so this is the compressor so this is the compressor work which we have combined so by the help of this external compressor work which we also term it as negative work because here the work is done on the system and we are concentrating the system as our refrigerant the fluid which, which is helping us to obtain the refrigeration effect so because of this compressor work because of the external compressor work the refrigeration the refrigerating fluid gets compressed and if the refrigeration process starts from here just uh, focus on this diagram here TS diagram just focus on this TS diagram over here so if it starts from here then it will reach here after the compression now what does it mean here so this is the saturated vapor line you know and this is the saturated liquid line this is the saturated liquid line so the compression starts from here and it is compressed up to here so the state of the fluid which was earlier which we can term it as a mixture of vapor and liquid is now compressed into a vapor state it is now then sent into the condenser where the vapor is condensed into liquid you can see the shift over here the point 2 from point to point 3 from the saturation saturated vapor line to the saturated liquid that means the fluid, the refrigerating fluid has changed its phase. It is now a liquid. Then we are expanding it in an expansion valve. Actually, in case of reverse Carnot engine, as it is a hypothetical engine, we are engine using expansion engine. But you will see that in practical cases, we do not use a expansion engine. Because the work output of an expansion engine is very less. So we, we do not use expansion engine over here okay then it is expanded 2.4 so at the same mm, where you can see it is the liquid concentration is much more here and then it is evaporated so the refrigerant is evaporated here now because of the evaporation heat has to be taken by the refrigerant the refrigerant cannot evaporate until and unless heat has been transferred to the refrigerant so when heat is being transferred to the refrigerant some amount of heat is coming from surroundings here so we can see that the surrounding space is getting refrigerated so this is the basic fundamental by how we can obtain refrigerant so because of this evaporation heat has to come from surroundings and the surroundings of the system which we are concerned the system which has to be refrigerated say here 
so heat is being supplied here q2 amount of heat is being supplied it helps to evaporate the refrigerant and as heat has to supply to this refrigerant the space which we are concerned over here gets refrigerated now in practical cases we do not use this reverse carnotage we can't use it okay but that's why we are uh, much more concerned about vcr var or uh, gas cycle re refrigeration so we'll be as this is the basic any refrigeration is basically dependent on this concept the refrigerant has to evaporate somehow heat has to be transferred for this ev evaporation heat has to be transferred from the system which needs to be refrigerated for this evaporation process and the space will get therefore refrigerant until and unless it doesn't happen the refrigeration cannot occur so let us solve the problem over here now here if there are some calculations you will find in the class notes we'll We'll give it over here. Now let us solve this problem. If cold storage is to be maintained at uh, minus five degrees Celsius, while the surroundings are at thirty-five degrees Celsius, the heat leakage from the surroundings in the cold storage is estimated to be twenty-nine kilodegree. Now you can see that the temperature of the cold storage obviously it will have the lower temperature so you know that thermodynamics deals with only absolute temperatures most of the cases you will see the application of kelvin over here not degree celsius so t2 is considered to be uh, 268 kilowatt while the surroundings are, are at 35 degree celsius so surroundings is at 35 degree celsius so it means that it will be 273 plus 3 uh, 35 so it will become 308 kelvin okay is that okay okay now the heat leakage from the surroundings into the cold storage so this is the cold storage say this is the cold storage uh, this is the surroundings and this is the cold storage uh, now heat is coming from here now see what happens if heat is constantly coming from surroundings to this cold storage after some time this cold storage the temperature which was minus 5 degrees celsius if you allow this heat transfer then the temperature of minus 5 degrees celsius will be obviously greater than it after some times the temperature will be more than minus 5 degrees celsius so the our condition the condition of maintaining the cold storage as minus 5 degrees Celsius will not be achieved. So what we are doing? We are constantly rejecting this heat out of this cold storage by applying some external energy in the form of what? And we can say that a refrigeration cycle is completed here. So heat is coming from surroundings the refrigerator is constantly moving out this heat it is constantly taking out this heat to the outside okay this is the point this is the concept of refrigerator so how it it can do that how it now mm, you can see that the heat leakage from the surroundings in the cold storage is estimated to be 29 kilowatt now this q2 the heat leakage which we are concerned now this this is 29 the refrigerator refrigerator has to take out this amount of heat this kilowatt is only because it is kilojoule per second that means per one second 29 kilojoule of heat is coming from the surroundings in the cold storage which will not allow the cold storage to maintain its temperature at, min at minus 5 degrees celsius that is why the refrigerator is taking out this heat continuously so um, you can see that this is a 29 kilowatt so the refrigerator has to take out this 29 kilojoule per second of heat 
continuously in a cyclic manner so that the cold storage maintains its temperature at minus 5 degrees Celsius. That is the problem here. Now we have to find out this. Now there is a relationship over here. The actual COP of your refrigeration plant is one third of, of an ideal plant. Now what do you mean by ideal plant? So this is the concept. The ideal COP means we are just only talking about reversed Carnot cycle. The COP found through the reverse Carnot cycle. So the refrigerator working here has a COP one third that of this revert Carnot cycle. Now we need to find out the COP of reverse Carnot cycle. That is why we have written over COP ideal. It is T2 by T2 by T1 minus T2. Okay. You will find this formula in the class notes. Okay. Mm, so uh, from this formula, we can calculate. Mm, so for the from the formula, we can calculate it, it as 6.7. As it is given that the real COP is one third of this ideal COP, so it will, it will be 2.23. And we know COP is what? It is the desired effect by the work input. Now, in case of the refrigerator, the desired effect is this low temperature heat. This heat has to be continuously taken out of this cold storage so that the cold storage maintains its temperature at minus 5 degrees Celsius. This is the problem here. So, we deal with that. And we find that the COP is 2.23 and thereafter we can calculate the work. So this is a very easy problem and we can easily solve it. There is another one problem. Um, you will find it in the class notes. So we are not discussing about that. And there is an assignment over here. I hope uh, you will submit this assignment with the stipulated date. Which you which will find in the Google Classroom which is given in your Google Classroom. So let us hope that you have understood the concept of refrigeration uh, and the concepts of ideal or cycle cyclic refrigeration process which we are discussing through the reverse Carnot cycle. I hope you can uh, you have understood the difference between cyclic process. Why cyclic process is needed? Why not non-cyclic process? Why cyclic process only? I hope you have understood the reasons. And after some, in the next class, we'll be discussing about VCR, that is the vapor compression refrigeration system. So let us wait for the next class, for the next lecture, and you will find these lectures in the YouTube. Uh, the link has been shared to in your whatsapp groups so click it see see it and watch it over and over and what I started with you know we are currently in a grievance our grievance is quite much we are in a deplorable situation the situation can get worse so stay at your homes stay safe stay healthy and learn because the learning cannot ever it cannot stop it has to be moving it has to be it has to go on at any cost and we are doing the most we are trying to help you out and you can contact me anytime you know my number okay so i am there for you always so let us complete this lecture and i hope you will you are finding it interesting if you find any kind of problem you can contact me you can ask your questions uh, you can comment over the youtube link okay okay so goodbye stay safe stay at your homes stay healthy